Hello, this is Depot Bridge for Lifeboat. There I am in all my pixelated glory. Not exactly how I look. My real self is actually um, has darker hair. So other than that, it's a perfect resemblance. But here I am about to talk about uh, the next upcoming game from Lifeboat, which will be Knights and Dragons. I was a very big producer on that. I can talk about a lot of the cool stuff, uh, some of the behind the scenes that it took to make this map realized. It took about uh, six months. It was a very long process, but uh, we worked with uh, a lot of people to make it possible. Um, all sorts of groups from Russia to uh, some volunteers uh, who were um, very instrumental in making this map. Behind me, you can see the, the map itself, the map within the map very huge map. It's actually a thousand by a thousand Minecraft blocks. As you can see, they're dragons to ride. They're evil dragons. And there are good dragons that vary in size. One is smaller than the other. There's a sphinx, which we will encounter later into the game. There is my favorite, the running dragon, which is a very fast lizard. We will encounter that as well. Ow! Kind of hurts. There is a uh, a manticore, which is uh, from Greek mythology. There's a phoenix right here. Um, there's a unicorn, which is really cool. Look at that in my unicorn glory. Yeah, fun. And, and one of my favorites, the jumping spider. <laughs> You'll see why it's, uh, it's really fun in the caves. Lots of caves. Okay, so looking at this book, it has a choice between uh, survival mode, or you can also choose free play mode. And here we have the map itself. Um, as it shows in the book, there are 23 mounts to find um, and ride. Some of them will let you ride them, a very few will let you ride them. But all the rest, you're going to have to tame them with the sword or the bow. The story goes that you begin in the good castle, and it turns out there are some evil dragons up to no good all the way at the top right of the corner of the map. And it looks like you are the only one who can go over and save the day. So, uh, let's get into the game. We're going to choose free play mode. And here we are. Welcome to Knights and Dragons. Um, as you can see, there are some friendly dragons nearby. Don't worry, they don't bite. And you don't have to fight them. You can just get right on and go flying around, enjoying the world. Uh, but before we go, let me just introduce to you... Oh, let's get some armor. Can't go be too safe in this very dangerous survival world. Uh, it is a survival world, so you can break blocks. Um, yeah, so this is what happens in free play mode. You have all 23 entities in a chest that you can go and look at, if you so choose uh, to play with them. And they're all friendly, of course, so you can just ride all the mounts. But that's kind of boring. That's why I recommend you play it in survival mode, because in survival mode, you have to explore the world yourself and find where the mounts are using the map. Um, and we gotta get a whistle. Whistle is really important. The whistle can be used on tamed mounts, uh, so you can turn them into items and take them with you. The dragon is very special in that every time you place it down, it has the possibility to be one of four different colors. This looks like an interesting house. Um, if we go inside it, I wonder what crazy things will await us. Oh, uh, yep, there are some regular Minecraft entities in there just to make things interesting. Uh, you might want to use the whistle every time you stop to keep your mount with you at all times in case you die. Uh, you do keep your items if you die, uh, so it, it's nice to sort of have uh, a dragon there ready for you to fly. Uh, when you respawn. Otherwise, it'll be stuck in the world. Oh, speaking of a flying mount, this is the very rare broom. I think we'll fly with the broom later. Ah, oh, there doesn't seem anything interesting up here, just this strange looking stove. Hmm. Oh, it screams at you. Well, okay. Um, so, once you defeat the stove, you can uh, ride it, like we're about to find out. There is a story behind where the stove came from. Turns out it is a Russian folktale that has something to do with um, 
a stove that you can ride or a stove that attacks you or something like that. I don't know the story myself, but the Russians promised me that when they made this entity, it would be something interesting. And I think that they have definitely delivered on that promise. We have a choice to return to the good castle or to explore the foreboding woods. I think we'll choose the latter. Oh, there's a wolf. And there's a creeper. Goodness, I gotta take them both on at once. Hope I can handle it. Okay. What's this? Oh, a silly panda. <laughs> yeah, so all the Minecraft entities are there too, as you can see as I kill the skeleton. Yeah, so let's leave the woods. I think uh, we got a wolf. I think that's all we need. And it looks like um, it's turning into night, so we need to find a place to rest. Um, I think I can find something in this desert. That looks very enchanted and crazy. Oh, a crescent moon. It sets a nice tone for our exploration into this uh, strange desert in the middle of the woods. What's this desert doing here? Let's see what this has to say. Powerful genies were summoned here along with their palace. They haunted still. They haunted still. Man, that voice sounds really familiar. Hmm. What is that? Oh my goodness, that's creepy. I think I'll have to kill it. Oh! By the sound, I'd say it's a dinosaur, but it looks like here it's a sphinx. Oh, cool. We'll have to ride that later. Sphinx is a neat entity. Egyptian-themed entity. And... Uh, maybe the genies are up at the top. Let's go uh, climb the top of this palace and see if there's something up there for us. Well, I don't know if I can make that. It's a pretty far ledge, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, oh, took a little damage, but uh, not worse for wear. Yeah, that creeper won't creep up on me. Ah, that one will. Good thing I'm wearing armor. Okay, I think uh, we're as high as we can go. Which means we're gonna have to fly. Hey, there's something strange. Hit it with a sword. It's a genie on a flying carpet. Oh man, that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, you say hey yourself. Well, it looks pretty friendly. Whoa, ow, oh, where did those come from? Um, I better go after it. Don't be a coward. <laughs> Looks like it summons ghosts to attack you. That's kind of cool. Well, what do we get for killing the genie? Oh, cool. A flying carpet. Yeah, this world is huge. Uh, if you go to the top of the mountain, you will run into the very peculiar phoenix. Uh, very hard to kill, so we'll just leave those alone for now. But if you would like to buy the map yourself and face off with those phoenixes, I would say they're probably the hardest entities to kill in the game. The second hardest entities would be the evil dragons. Okay, so we can just park here. Yeah. This will be a nice place to park up. Oh, gotta kill some things. There's the evil dragon. Maybe I can surprise it. Nope, I can't. Well, at least it's not fire breathing. That would be really hard if it were fire breathing. Ow! Oh, where'd that fire come from? Oh, it is fire breathing. Nice. I wonder if I can... Yes! I can hit it back at it just like a gas. That's neat. But, um, hopefully it doesn't... Ah! Okay. <laughs> I better go after it with my sword. Yeah. Take that, evil dragon. Take it. Take it. Not me. <laughs> oh, well. Well, we're back to uh, where we were before. So, um, I guess, let me make sure I got 
uh, a bed this time so that I can use it to uh, sleep uh, a little bit closer to the evil dragon. I think I'll take the Sphinx out for a spin. The Sphinx entity is really cool. You can fly around in that. Uh, there's a cave here. Maybe I can get inside this cave. I know I'm supposed to be defeating the evil dragon, but there's so many cool things in here. Okay, here's a trick. If you want to go in the cave and not fall and die... Um, oh, what's in this chest? Oh yeah, at every cave there's a nice stone pickaxe and some things you can gather to help you. Uh, but if you want to get down into the cave and not die, use any entity uh, and it will break your fall. You won't die at all. So you can jump, take a leap of faith all the way down to these huge, expansive caves. My goodness. Lots of things in these caves. Okay, there's something. Looks like an ogre. Hope it doesn't smash me. Doesn't sound like an ogre. Sounds like another dinosaur. Okay, we can ride the ogre even. Oh my goodness. Okay, ogre, help us out. Take us out of here. Come on, you can climb up. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. I sped the video up a little bit just to get to the point, but yeah, that ogre is really helpful in helping us find our way out of the cave. And there's a pirate ship and a floating island. I asked for floating islands when the design dock was created. And, uh, oh, what's that off in the distance? Is that a, is that a seahorse? A seahorse, huh? Let's check our trusty manual. Hmm. The rare creatures, hmm, unicorns. I wonder if we'll find those. Desert creatures, cave creatures, land creatures. There it is, seahorses. I don't know why it's called land creatures. Who wrote this book? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I wrote the book. But there you have it. Uh, seahorses in this game are land creatures. Uh, please don't use that on a test if you have any biology tests or anything. Because uh, seahorses are actually... They're not even lake creatures. They're, um, they're sea creatures. How do I know that? I don't know. I'm just, just that smart, I guess. Okay, if you shoot its tail, that's where it gets hurt. I think I'll get some sword action going. Yeah, maybe it won't bite me. <laughs> that's a cool sound. Ah! When I was working with the Russians on the sounds, I wanted each mount to have its own uh, sound to it. And I told them, you don't have to put any sounds for the seahorses. But they decided to uh, add some really neat seahorse sounds. I don't know if that's how seahorses sound, but in this game that is. Oh, that looks really cool. That's a really neat entity. And it can go right over the water like a boat. I wonder what's inside here. Yeah. So when this was built, this naturally produced in the Minecraft world, and I thought... Man, it's really dark. Let me turn on my night vision there. Oh, there's something crawling down in the bottom there. Gonna have to take it out. It has six legs. Sounds like a dragon or something. Shoot at it. Oh. <laughs> nope. It's another dinosaur, I guess. A bunch of dinosaur sounds on this map. Okay, let's get out of there. Turn off our night vision. Yeah, I wonder if these seahorses can be... Oh, that's why they're called land animals, because they can also go on the land. Uh, I guess that's my excuse anyways. Um, what does this next map look like? It's super fast. It's the running dragon. Oh my goodness. Well, that is neat. Okay, let me get off here and take a look at our map. Uh, looks like we've got uh, a few of the entities. We've got the, the running dragon. Oh, up at the top right, there's the evil dragon. I've been chasing around doing all these caves and spelunking, and I forgot what my task was. But before we go on, let's take a look at the beautiful, beautiful creature. My favorite creature in the map, the running dragon. And it doesn't just run, it leaps. <laughs> Sounds like a... Sounds like I'm talking about Superman or something. But uh, this is like a super awesome entity. Um, I just love how high it can leap. and You can explore the world in a very interesting way. Oh, what's that? Is that a rainbow? What is that? Oh, it's, it's a rainbow waterfall <laughs> leading to a pool. And of course, that's got to be where the unicorns are. 
Okay, I think uh, you've done very good, Running Dragon, helping me find these unicorns. I guess I'll have to fight them. Wait! Oh, they're impervious to my sword. I wonder if they'll let me ride them. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. They just let you ride them. Well, very neat. I wonder if it does anything else special. Can it leap? Whoa! Yeah, the unicorns can leap pretty high. They are the highest leaping mount in the game. Um, I ask the Russians to make these unicorns leap really high. Um, so maybe these are the, the supermen that can bound over a, a building. Is that how the superman term goes? I don't know. Okay, so when uh, I asked the volunteers to design this world, I did not tell them. Oh, there's another entity to grab, a centaur. I did not tell them to put a coliseum in the game, but they built two. And what do you know, they're really cool looking. Well, it's nighttime again, and uh, maybe we could find some shelter in the cave. Whoa, that is a, a very large fall. It's very... So there are a bunch of caverns in this game, and uh, there actually is one of the rare entities hidden in this cavern. The Manticore, which um, fortunately we will not run into, but uh, you can look at the map and find where it is. What is that? It's a spider. It looks a little different than the regular spiders in Minecraft lore. Oh, goodness. It's got green legs and a green body, and it leaves behind an entity. It's the jumping spider. Very cool. Love that. Well, let's try this spider out and see how far it can jump. See if it can get us out of here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the caverns are very, very unique looking. They have the stalagmite stalactite. I think the stalactite hang. Or is it the mite? I forget. Oh, that's a creepy centipede. Up in another one of those ogres. Ah. Wow. Takes a lot of hits to kill it. I wonder what it's like to ride one of those. Yeah, okay, so we've made it out and it is night time um, with the help of our jumping spider. So I think I will place a bed here, go to sleep, and uh, what was I supposed to be doing? Oh yes, well there's just so many things to do in this game you forget there are some evil dragons to kill. I think it's uh, fitting. Yeah, look at that Colosseum, that looks neat that we use. A, oh, it's an orange dragon this time. That changing colored dragon. No white dragons. I, I wish there was a white dragon, but uh, um, I guess we ran out of time. That would have been cool to put some white. But the dragon does change multiple colors. The evil dragon does too. And I think I'll be quiet as we get up to this mysterious evil castle with our second encounter against the evil dragon. Okay, I'm gonna sneak up this time. It's not gonna get us. <laughs> hey, what do you think of that? Oh, that's what you think of that. Yeah, that hurts. But two hits and it's down, and we can collect it. And there we have it. Now we have the evil dragon. Oh, it's blue this time. I think it was like a purplish red. That's kind of cool. So it changes colors as, just as the good dragons do. Okay, let's put all the dragons in the game. There's the evil dragon, the running dragon, and the good dragon. And I think I'll fly up to the top, and let's just take a look at all the entities I've collected so far. There we go, nice landing there. Okay, so we have the evil dragon. The good dragon. Well, it's red that time. The running dragon. <laughs> the seahorses. Maybe this should be called land horses. But that name's taken. Uh, the stove thing. The flying carpet. The sphinx. The magical broom. An ochre. Oh, the creepy centipede. And the centaur. Let's count them. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's get behind there. Nine, ten, eleven. Eleven entities. Well, that's. Wait, I think we're missing one. Ah, uh, twelve entities with the unicorn. Oh man, that is really cool. So, 
Out of the 23 entities, it looks like we've got 12. And that's the world, in a nutshell. And I've only gotten half of the entities, so that's really a lot. Oh. There's one more entity down here, might as well grab it. Yeah, the Cerberus. Let me get inside of a three-headed dog thing. I wonder if it jumps. Let's find out. Wow, it does. So, there's the map, uh, Knights and Dragons. I hope you enjoyed my playthrough of it. Um, it was really fun to build and design. Uh, this is Deepwell Bridge, signing off.